What is up everybody, Dak here with uh, just a quick channel update. Uh, seeing as I haven't put up a video in a few weeks, I thought I'd just make a quick update to talk about um, what I'm doing and some projects that are coming up. Uh, right now I'm back at uni and it's quite busy so that's why there's been a bit of a slowdown in content put out. But um, I have been working on some things, uh, namely uh, speak on type stuff. So you can see uh, this amp was uh, two XLRs or one XLR per channel. Uh, I've now made this adapter so I can plug speak on cables into it. So um, pretty ghetto adapter still right now. Um, gonna make like add a bit of wood, but I just wanted to make it as kind of sleek and compact as possible. But yeah, you can see speak on connector now plugs into the amps. Um, this amp. Uh, you can see too, uh, the way I've wired it up is uh, this bottom one, the uh, channel 2 or channel B, uh, just has a single output here and the channel A output also carries channel B. So this one, if you had a 4 core um, speak on connect, you can run stereo through one cable and if you don't then you can still hook up left to this one and right to this one for example. Uh, something else I've been working on is, um, may as well just show it, this right here, uh, this is the, uh, yeah, well it's a crossover. So you can see a uh, basic uh, crossover is a capacitor or inductor and a bit more complex one is both. So this one has an inductor here and a capacitor. Here. The input is a speak on connector here and it separates it so you can choose either a 12 dB proactive high pass, a 12 dB proactive low pass, or, and I did test it and it seemed like about a 9 dB proactive um, crossover. So one of these cables you can run to a base unit, the other one you can run to a mid treble unit, and that way you get um, essentially an external crossover. So you, you can run one lead and two different speakers off it. Uh, this here is just a pass through two. Uh, so pins one and two go through the crossover, pins three and four are passed through. So uh, what that means is if you have a four core uh, speak on cable, such as this one right here, uh, what you can do is you can run left on one and two and right on three and four, which means that with two of these crossovers here, you can actually run four different speakers. So you can run two base units left and right and two treble units left and right off a single cable, which I reckon is pretty cool. So that's why I'm making a few of these. Uh, this one, um, in, well, they're all four 8 ohms I'll mention uh, just quickly. This one right here crosses over at 200 hertz. And um, yeah, uh, sorry about the mess, but <laughs> uh, this one right here, um, once again, I'm not sure how the light balance is is going. Um, this is a slightly bigger inductor uh, and a slightly bigger capacitor which leads to this being a 130 Hz crossover instead of this one's 200. So another reason I wanted to do this is uh, right now see that unit up there the array speaker and that 15 um, they are well the amps turned off but if I was running with music through it that would be doing 200 down that would be doing 200 up which means uh, this whole system, I can crank it without worrying about damaging the array speaker as it's ported. And I did have a look online, at, I think it's tuned to around 80 hertz ported. So anything under 80 hertz could potentially damage it. Uh, this one down here um, has some problems with beaming. So anything probably above one kilohertz just sounds awful through it. And then I've got that one down there. But hopefully... Um, uh, eventually I'll be able to run a pair of these speakers in stereo so I can have Array 15 and another Array 15 in stereo. Um, plus this guy right here for a 2.1 setup and potentially two because I'm making two more crossovers at 130. Um, I can run another two Array speakers so that means four Array speakers, two 15s and one horn for a sort of 2.1 setup that should get very loud so that's the goal at least um what else should i mention oh yeah in regards to these speakers you can see that right now they've got cutouts for 18s and they're still 15s um 
I have ordered an SPL meter. I've actually, no, I shouldn't say that. I'm in the process of ordering an SPL meter. Maybe by the time this is out, it's been ordered. I'm just waiting on an email back as I've got to do a manual order. And once I get that, I'll be able to test uh, these two 15s against the horn efficiency wise and then two 18s. Um, I still reckon I'm going to get the 18s, but I'll wait a bit longer and save a bit more before I get the two 18s. As in, <laughs> as yeah, once again, in theory, if um, the two 18s aren't as loud as the horn, it's kind of technically a waste of money, but at the same time, it means that now I know the horn is more efficient than two 18s. And if it's not, then that'll be a bit of a rip for the horn, but yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, SPL meter. Uh, soon to be on its way so I can do efficiency testing. It also means I can do some testing on the Mazda and I think I'll put up um, some videos of SPL testing in the Mazda too. Might try a few different boxes, put the horn in there, <laughs> things like that just for fun. Um, so yeah, I suppose I may as well show you the one of these that I've already made and yeah, you can see too, it's not that big. Uh, this is, I'm not Sure, I know that the components are rated at 250 watts, but I'm not sure if they're 500, if it can handle 500 watts if it's 250 high and 250 low. I've got a feeling it might be up to 500 watts. Uh, but yeah, up here's the one I've made already. Uh, you can see, I uh, kind of get a general gist of what's going on. Uh, you can see here's the speak on connector that comes in here. Um, it's set in uh, fiberglass resin, so it's <laughs> super tough. It's ridiculous. This It feels so solid. Um, and then on the outputs, you can see here's the, uh, the through, which is not being used. Um, and then I've got the low pass, which goes to this cable, and the high pass, which goes to this cable. So they're all detachable. Um, and as I did mention, you can run them as a high pass filter or a low pass filter or a crossover at um, 12, 12 and 9 dB proctive roughly, respectively. So I could, uh, which is yeah one of the reasons why I've got like the piggyback leads with the plugs. Uh, so you can unplug depending on what you want to use it for. When I use, um, say if I'm just running one to the array speaker, I can have a super short lead like this one right here uh, which should just keep it quite neat and tidy also kind of a side note uh, this box here which is my series ice barrack sixth order I uh, gave it a paint and I think I might do some more testing on it um, but a lot of this testing I kind of need to wait to get the race speaker in order to do some more I mean not the race speaker the SPL meter <laughs> you might see some things featured on this shortly. Set the crossover in uh, the fiberglass resin now. Uh, the way I do it is uh, this is two half pipes that kind of go over, then I pour it in from the top. So, yeah, I think I'm kind of tempted to make this product too. Uh, the first one took me a while to make, but this one didn't take me too long. Uh, so, <laughs> if you if, I don't know, you're in the industry and reckon a, a passive low-pass, high-pass crossover would be kind of useful to speak on, then uh, let me know in the comments. and I might make some and sell them, which would be cool. <laughs> I've just removed the second crossover from the cast right there, and it's so fresh out of the mould, it's hard to hold. <laughs> uh, it's super hot still. Uh, I've removed most of the tape off it and I'll have the second one down here in a sec but you can see into this one a lot easier than the other one even though it's got the ripples on the surface uh, these ripples are due to uh, the last one I did I used masking tape uh, to separate uh, the fiberglass resin from the cast itself but this time instead of masking tape I used uh, clear cello tape type stuff. Uh, the cello tape, uh, the first mold attempt, this is the second one, the first attempt, uh, the tape um, adhesive failed and I had one hell of a leak. Yeah, 
yeah, it went pretty bad. <laughs> uh, so that was a that was pretty awful. But the second attempt, which quite plainly has worked, uh, this one instead of using tape to seal around the bottom, I used hot melt glue. And ah, oh, holy crap, this thing's hot. Uh, something nice about the hot melt glue though is that uh, it was super easy to remove due to it still being hot, even though it had set, and because it's an open top cast, I can see when it's set, uh, just by observing the fluid on the top. This very top bit here, it's quite funny, it um, kind of solidified upward and just left a puddle which then solidified on top. So that's what this this bit here is. Um, yeah, it's gradually cooling down, look, there's a, oh, will it focus? It might not be able to, yeah, see that bubble just there, yeah. Uh, this one's a bit more compact than the last one, as I did a new soldering strategy that kept it a bit more compact. I've already tested it, but it's really freaky looking at it from the outside. Now, see this capacitor here? Looks kind of like it's exploded, but uh, the other one looked like that too, and it still functioned, so I'm guessing it's fine. <laughs> Holy crap, it's hot. Ah, it's oh, it feels like it's burning my hands, but not quite. Could be about 70 Celsius right now, maybe even 80. It's not hot enough to boil water or anything, but it's super hot. Um, also, yeah, a lot of the connectors are not put on yet. I've only put one on, that was to test it, and I gave a listen, and it sounds like it works. Um, yeah, after the mess, uh, yeah, it was... <laughs> it survived, but yeah, it wasn't great. There's just some more tape to remove, then I can plug it in and test it properly after putting the other top on. And then I can run stereo, which is good. And yeah, here you can see it next to the other one. Uh, the other one, the fib fibrous nature of the... Um, of the masking tape preferred to stick to the resin rather than um, the mold, so, or the, the mold and tape. So this one looks way clearer. Uh, it's pretty well the same length, actually. In fact, they're kind of almost remarkably similar. Anyway, that's good. Uh, consistency's good. Um, uh, this one, I'm not sure. I suppose it's just as strong. This one's super super tough but this one's probably still technically setting so might not feel as strong in the in the hands yet but this one the other one yeah i'm pretty sure that bit of metal that metal bracket would break before it broke i mean come on this thing survived a, a fall onto the ground before there was even the rest in it. <laughs> i might make another video on just crossovers in general um Leave a comment if you'd be interested in, yeah, a crossover focus video. I'll probably end up making it anyway, but uh, it'll up, it'll go up on the priority list if I see some people interested. Other than that, I don't really have any other big projects right now, so most of my content will either be uh, the uh, technical videos or just updates. Yeah, you can see on the bottom too, there's residue from fiberglass resin from the the spill, uh, yeah, that was a that was a big mess and a big waste. But if you if you enjoyed, uh, leave a like and thanks for watching. See ya.